Two hundred pounds in the bank. Who says Bonko? Bonko. I need nine to beat you. Neuf à l'avant. Finish up? Well, there's a spare place if anybody wants to sit down. One hundred pounds in the bank. Who says Bonco? would be rather foolish, Mr. Smith. You work at Castle Hill, don't you? You seem to know a lot about me. More than you think, perhaps. I know, for example, that five years ago, after a bad run on the horses, you sold some information to a friend of mine. Trivial stuff and not much money involved. But I can promise you better payment this time. For what? I believe they're testing a new rocket called the Solid Orb at Castle Hill. They may be. Maybe. Surely you know. Look, you're wasting your time. Even if I wanted to help, I can't. I'm not a scientist. I'm only the officer in charge of transport. It's the transport that interests me. I have reason to believe that the solid door will soon be taken by road for test firing off the coast of Scotland. That could be. I just want to know the time and the route. That's all. No one will suspect you. It's worth 2,000 pounds. See how she stood up to it. Robinson, as soon as that test piece is cool enough to handle, bring it in here. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> well, don't look so surprised. Have you no faith in your own inventions? It's better to be a pessimist in this game. It seems all right. Well, when shall we be taking her to Scotland? When we're 100% sure, young man. And when we can persuade the war office blimps that we're not telling them a fairy story. <laughs> but the trouble with solid fuel missiles is flight control. These fins on the outside of the rocket can only be used to steer it as it passes through air. Once it's reached its operational height, outside the Earth's atmosphere, ordinary methods of flight control are useless. And this brings us to Professor Howard's great achievement. Attempts to deflect the gas stream by placing movable vanes inside the tailpipe have so far failed because no known metal will withstand the heat. However, 
These special veins are so resistant to heat that they can be placed inside the rocket close to the hottest part of the jet. Very good. No doubt when the press get hold of this, they'll say that we have discovered a new heat-resistant metal, but this is not so. It is merely a new method of treating an existing metal. In fact, gentlemen, any qualified metallurgist who managed to lay his hands on one of these veins could solve the problem in a matter of hours. Oh, yes, sir. Would be indeed. Thanks for that. Goodbye. Just got the news. The modified tail section of Solid Ore will be going up north for trials next week. Is that official? Yes. Look, I've uh, got to go out for a minute. I won't be long. But uh, I'm due off at half past. Well, well it's all right. I'll, I'll be back by then. Let's see how good you are. Not bad. You've got to get the whole line down to win. There, your turn now. What do you bet I don't get them all, huh? You'll never do it. Only eight. I told you. Nine. I'm not going to play with you anymore. <laughs> Why not? Well, not when you're invisible anyway. It's too easy to cheat. You could have knocked them all down with your hand. <laughs> Next time, I'll wear gloves and still beat you. Brady here. Oh, hello, Professor Howard. The Salador. Certainly, I should be giving a special check before traveling. As a matter of fact, I'm going over to transport in about half an hour. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you there. Are you going out? That's right, Sally. Well, make yourself visible. It isn't everyone that's used to an invisible man. <laughs> Okay, make it Tuesday afternoon. Right, thanks. Goodbye. Morning, Mr. Brady. Hello, Johnson. Professor Howard been in? No, should he have been? I arranged to meet him. We've got to make a final check on Salador. You left it a bit late, haven't you? Well, can't afford to take risks. But he's gone. What? Yes, it went to... Oh, 20 minutes ago. But it wasn't scheduled to leave until 10. Smith changed the arrangements. Did he have the authority to do it? He told me they'd rung up and altered the time of departure. Hello, Brady. Uh, Johnson, well, is she ready to go? She's gone. Johnson here says there were some fresh instructions fallen through. Well, who from? Who could have done that? We'll soon find out. Hello, Exchange. What calls have there been for Mr. Smith this morning? Yeah. None. You sure? Right. Where else could they contact him? It might have been at his home before he left. I'd better go and check. You're quite sure nobody called him? Oh, no, Peter. Ronald certainly didn't get any calls. Let's see. Uh, what time was he due to leave? Oh, I don't know. He, he left here about half past eight. Seemed very anxious to be off. Uh, no, thanks. Well, that's uh, all I wanted, Betty. Uh, tell him I call, will you? Peter? Yeah? Look, perhaps there is something I ought to tell you. I'm worried about Ronald. Dreadfully worried. Go on. I found some money hidden in the house. A lot? Hmm. Two thousand pounds. Did you uh, speak to him about it? Yes. I couldn't get any sense out of him. I'm so frightened he started gambling again. Gambling? Does he gamble much? Well, he used to get in on the big card games, but not since he's had this job. Well, at least I, I thought he'd given it up. But you're not sure, huh? Oh, I don't I suppose he must have done. He's just been moping around the house. He's hardly been out for weeks. Well, don't worry about it, Betty. I'll, I'll have a talk with him as soon as I can. Bye. Bye. John, show me the route they've taken. Uh, I should have got to uh, about there by now. Good. 
Now listen, call the police. Tell them to stop that truck and hold it till I get there. But uh, then call Professor Howard. Tell him what I've done. Yes, but get busy. Give me the police. What's the matter, Mr. Smith? Uh, nothing. Why? <laughs> you seem pretty nervous. Well, there's nothing about it here. Why didn't they tell us about it this morning? They didn't know. Well, you have to take your time, Sarge. We've got a rocket on board, don't forget. You'll make it all right. I'll lead the way. If it's only rough for about a mile, then you'll be back on the main road. Well, if I ditch this lot, it's more than my life's worth. What do you say about it, Mr. Smith? Oh, we'll make it, Evans. OK. You're the boss. Have you seen a big RAF truck pass this way? Yes, about 10 minutes ago. Straight ahead. I think we've taken the wrong route. Here. Yeah. Take a look. He said there was to be no violence. That wasn't violence. That's precautions. Come on, get him aboard. There was no need to hit him that hard. You could have killed him. So what? You think we're in this for fun? No, not for fun. But not for murder either. As far as I'm concerned, you can count me out. What do you think you're going to do? I'm going to get Evans to a hospital as fast as I can. I'll give you a hand. Hey, I thought he was with us. He's done his job, hasn't he? Come on, no time to waste. Get that truck into the quarry. Have you seen a big RAF truck? Nothing like that passed through here, sir. Are you sure? A truck with a section of rocket aboard? Nothing. It's been very quiet. Thanks.
Get his gun! Hurry up, we haven't got all day. I travel up front. You travel with our friends. Shut up. That's enough, Smith. Looks as if you stand to lose both ways. Right, Sergeant. I'll be here. Keep in touch. Any further news, Inspector? Not yet, sir. No word from Brady? No. Well, he's our last hope now. I wouldn't say that. We know the area where it happened. They can't get far. I got far enough. Stealing a rocket that size or not leaving a trace? Well, it must be somewhere in the area. And they can't have lifted it off that track, not without a crane. Brady must be onto something, or he would have been in touch with us. I hope so. Otherwise, we shall be the laughing stock of the world. We can't rely on Brady alone. What action are you taking? We've thrown a cordon around the whole district. We're gradually closing in. Well, that's not much use if they're already outside it. I doubt that. In my opinion, they're held up somewhere in a barn or a garage. What makes you assume that? Well, you can't move a thing like that without someone seeing you. Quite deserted. No sign of the rocket or personnel. Signs that several other vehicles have been here. Professor Brady's car has been found deserted a hundred yards further up the road. Warn all vehicles to be on the lookout for a large truck carrying a rocket. Over. Well done, boys. All right, get that camouflage off. The technical boys will be here in a minute. What about your buddies? Leave them where they are. They'll be dumped later. In the river? That's what he said. All of them? Smith, too? He's got scruples. And people with scruples are liable to talk. Go on, hurry up with that. We've got no time to lose. It's all yours from now on. You haven't a minute to lose. Got to get a sample of that metal. Right. Hello, operator. Give me the police. Listen carefully. I'm with the missing rocket. It's in a garage in some yard. I'm not sure of the address, but it's a... Hello? Hello? What happened? Guard the door! The invisible man! He's here! Machine. 
No talking. I may have hit him. Smell. Keep quiet. It's me, Peter Brady. Guns into the middle of the floor. Come over your hands up. Listen, you can't win now. That injured man needs a doctor. You there behind that oil drum. Tell him to give up. Remember, I can see you, but you can't see me. Even if I'm standing right behind you. Can you see in the dark? Mr. Brady? No. That was a good idea. But it's your last shot, isn't it? Stay where you are. They'll kill you. I've got to take a chance. I've got to help Brady. What do we do, boss? We can't just sit here and get picked off one by one. I've got one of the Brady! Hang on to it! Okay, officer. I'm the invisible man. This is the rocket you're looking for. But don't worry about that. Get back to the garage as quick as you can. The men you want are in there. Come on. Well, here's your number one, Inspector. The rest of the gang are being picked up right now. Thanks, Mr. Brady.